So my friends, the new M3. You guys wanted it to look like this. BMW M had other ideas. So to those people who don't like this grill, it's even more hurtful because the M3 is essentially the BMW flagship. It's the car or the type of car that gave birth to BMW M in the first place. And I'm gonna explore the entire history of the M3 when we do the M4 review, which is coming up next on the channel. So look forward to that. For me, I've had quite the run up to this car. It all started with first the initial launch where I saw the car in the lovely Kyalami green color. And I got to see the car, both of them, with completely fresh eyes. So I didn't have any online opinions to look at. All I went in was with my own prejudices. And being a big AMG fan, when I saw the large grill and the more aggressive looks, it really spoke to me as someone who was outside of the brand because I felt like that aggressive look is something that would bring me into the brand. And I've said that consistently since then. Then I went to the M-Town set where I was filming the ad for the M-Town spot. And I got to see a much cooler stealth spec. And at this point, I was really sold, particularly on the M3 that I was driving around in. It looked amazing in a much more stealthy spec. It also really spoke to me because it reminded me of like the old 328, the 328 homage as well that was done in the modern era. And most of all, I think, the one that links directly to it is the CSL homage concept. Though I think that grille was probably designed a little bit better and I'm sure the facelift of this will probably take cues from that. But it reminded me enough of that to really like this. Now today, we're gonna explore all the details that make this car what it is from the inside, in spite of the grill. And then we're gonna go on a drive. And I've driven both the M3 and the M4 at this point. And I can tell you guys, as a spoiler for this review, that both of them smashed all of my expectations to pieces. I cannot wait to show you so now let's do a nerdy deep dive into this car to see everything that was changed and then burn some rubber M-Town style in the flagship M car, the new M3 competition. So guys, today's episode of RBR is sponsored by my favorite wallet company, The Ridge. Why are they my favorites? Because like you guys, I love carbon fiber and they make simply the best carbon fiber wallets that I've ever seen. Look at that, matches exactly your car. You can get the forged one as well. Now with slim wallets, I'm usually used to this type of one. Yes, I'm a bit of a tart with the, uh, the brand, but these can only hold I don't know, five, six cards maybe. Whereas in The Ridge, you can get up to 12 cards plus cash within the cash strap here. I also love that when I put it in my pocket, it doesn't bulge at all, it's super slim. And it's got RFID blocking technology so no one can take money out of any of my cards. Now, of course, I've got a discount for you guys. All you need to do is go to theridge.com forward slash RBR, use the code RBR, you'll get 10% off one of these awesome carbon wallets. Help support the channel as well, and you'll have something super stylish and something that matches lovely motorsport cars. So go to ridge.com forward slash RBR. So guys, what's changed on the M3? Well, visually, pretty much every single panel of the car is different, apart from, I believe, just the front doors and the boot lid. Every single other part of the car is unique to the M3, and that's more so than the M4, which shares the rear section and the doors with the base four series. So the first thing you see different on this car is on the front end, and I'm not talking about the grill, I'm talking about the lights. These aren't three series lights, these are four series lights. So you actually have the lights from a level higher, I guess, on the M3, and equally, when you look at the 340i, that's got the smaller traditional grille, whereas the 440i and the 4 Series in general has the larger grille. So the M4 doesn't look that different, whereas the M3 looks totally different to the rest of the 3 Series. Either that's a good thing for you or it's a negative, but it's nice to have lights from the car above this on this car, and I think it really suits them as well. Then you've got the bonnet, which is completely unique as is almost every panel in this car. You've got the shape of the grill that flows through making the power domes and the bonnet lines on here. I quite like these C-shaped bits over here. This is very nice. The BMW logo in the middle, quite large. As with most cars in this class, like the C63, for example, you've got extended front wheel arches, which look fantastic, of course, but where the M3 is unique, it's also got extended rear arches. 
Think along the same lines as Audi's RS6 when you see it on the road. It's got this massively wide stance. And whereas none of the rivals bother with this, the M3 has it and it really looks fantastic. Of course, the last generation had it as well. It's great to see that carry forward into this. But where this M3 is unique, we've got a staggered wheel setup from 1920, which was brought in from the start for performance purposes. And then you'll see the kind of grip and steering that we get because of it later. Your front wing here, again, completely unique. This is the widened wing. We've got the M3 competition badge on the side. Your side sills, again, completely unique. They look good in gloss black. And when you look at the rear of the car, the pipes are huge. And they look great inside a rather blocky and aggressive lower diffuser. Again, the back of the car, much more blocky than the standard 3 Series. Really looks aggressive. It's got some like real muscular stance to it, which is lovely. Then you've got this carbon spoiler on top as well. The entire look I really like. I prefer the rear lights of this, I think, to the M4. All around, I think it's a better looking car from the rear, certainly. There's other changes like the carbon fiber roof and different wheel options, but I'm gonna go into this as I talk to you now about what's changed internally with this car. First and foremost, we have to talk about the engine. So this is the S58 engine, which was based on what you find in the 40Is, the B58. But the S58 is a closed deck construction. We've got a lightweight crankshaft. We've got forged pistons. All of this done to promote what is a higher revving engine at 7250. Apart from that, we've also got a twin turbo setup rather than the single twin scroll turbo that was in the B58. Here we've got single scroll twin turbos, which was an interesting choice, but I did not discern any lag when I was driving it. And finally, in an effort to reduce weight, they've actually used 3D printing technology to craft the shape of the cylinder head, which is pretty amazing. Now, when we look at the standard car, the non-competition, which by the way, we don't get in the UK, this car gets 480 brake horsepower, 550 newton meters, 0 to 60 of 4.2. And of course, this comes as a manual. Sadly, not available in the UK. The competition, however, has got 510 brake horsepower, 650 newton meters, so 100 more than the standard car, and a 0 to 60 of 3.9 seconds, which I'm guessing is conservative considering how fast this feels on the road. All of that is linked to the eight-speed ZF box. Yes, they have come away from the dual clutch. I'll come to that in a minute why they've done that. But BMW have done all new software for this versus the M5 and the M8, which did feel sometimes sluggish. And now they say the shift times are even faster, less than 150 milliseconds. So we'll see what that's like later. As for leaving the dual clutch, they've come to the ZF eight-speed because of the upcoming X-Drive all-wheel drive M3 and M4. So like in the M5, you will get an all-wheel drive, all-year-round car with a switchable rear-wheel drive mode. That's gonna be coming after the summer this year. So for those of you in the world who want a bit more all-year-round usage, BMW M are giving you that option with the M3 and the M4, which is pretty awesome because I don't think any rival will. Now let's talk about sound. Unlike the previous gen where they had to shoe in the OPFs after the car had been designed, with this new M3 and M4, they were able to do the sound design with those changes in mind. So they've made some changes. We've got equal length pipes at the bottom versus what the S55 was like. So that will change the sound in itself. We've got an asymmetric exhaust manifold. There's two OPFs and two resonators in fact in this, but they knew about this from the start. So they were able to design it to still have a pretty decent verbal. Of course, there's a valve control module on the rear as well. And you still get sound getting pumped in from the engine bay into the car, though it is the real engine sound, not something made up. As for how it sounds, well, take a look. I think it's got a pretty decent inline six burble. can get the M performance exhaust. Do it at your own peril though, because it looks, well, rather horrific and you might be laughed at, though it does sound pretty decent from the preview that we got. Next, we come on to alloy wheels. There's quite a few choices. Within this generation, every wheel option you get, even from the smallest to the largest, they're all forged wheels, which is great. The first ones you get are the 825Ms, which you see here. They're available in different finishes. Then you get the 826, which is, the multi-spoke option that we find more akin to 
typical BMW M design. These are really cool, and I love the way they look, particularly in the shadowed out version. And finally, if you go to M Performance Options, you can get the 963 M, which were launched in a horrific looking Sao Paulo yellow when I was in the M Town spot, but the ones you can actually buy just come in a standard matte gray, which actually look really quite good. And of course, tire development, really key with a performance car like this. And on the previous M3 and M4, we had 255 cross-section on the front. This has grown to 275 on both of these cars now. And this is gonna help with better braking and better performance with the suspension, the rears, still 285. And now you can get the Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires as an option, which used to be solely as an option on the CS models. Now more changes. We've got something called IB, which is an integrated braking system. Essentially what that does is it allows us to have two different settings inside the car for braking. One for comfort and one for sportier driving. So you can choose that within your M setup menu. We've also got brand new M compound brakes here, which you will see either finished in red like our car today, also available in black or in the traditional blue. These are a six piston setup with a special coating on them or you can go for the carbon ceramics, which cut an entire 13 kg from the entirety of the car, which is damn impressive. They are of course finished in that typical bronzy gold look of the M Performance brakes. Of course, we've got unique adaptive M suspension in this car, which has got unique kinematics for the M3 and for the M4. Here we've got electronically controlled shock absorbers, both on the front and the rear, so it should give the car a bit more breadth of ability. That links on to then the stiffening that they've done, which is actually extensive particularly on the lower half of the car. First of all, we've got the typical strut brace that goes on top of the engine bay. This is nowhere near as pretty as the old boomerang one, but it does the job. As you can see, it goes right across from each wheel to the next. At the bottom, we've got a trapezoidal aluminum shear panel, which actually connects further down the car to transfer more of the forces to the rigid part of the car. This is undoubtedly gonna help with steering feel and rigidity on the front. We've also got a similar aluminum panel on the rear that again links the two parts of the rear again for better power transfer. We've also got additional struts both on the front and the rear again to help with rigidity. In terms of the rear, it's a five link setup with a steel axle and then four aluminum links as well. All of this done for a more rigid ride, particularly on the racetrack. Now the aerodynamics were all done via clay model and it was something that was refined over time. For example, the typical air curtains that you'd see on a BMW model, these push air throughout the outside of the wheel as efficiently as possible and they revised this many times. The one that I found quite cool was these intakes here, which you'll see the sharp lines. And what this does in aerodynamics is force air through this area and actually goes through and cools the brakes very directly. So I quite like that element. Then behind the grill itself, of course, the large grill is there for a large amount of cooling. So the majority of the cooling goes on behind this area here, which is actually the typical BMW grill area. And then this lower part, if you have the automatic, the eight-speed ZF, that's for the gearbox oil cooling just behind here. Much of the lower half is covered for aerodynamics as well. There are some aerodynamic fins at the bottom that again push air where it needs to go. What I found quite interesting is that the back half of the car on the lower side was pushed up again to give better aerodynamics. And finally, of course, you've got the rear spoiler and the diffuser, which both help with adding downforce to this car. And then we look at the weight of the car and it's pretty much the same. The previous car came in at 1640 at its top spec. And this one with the manual comes in, I believe at 1670. If you have the automatic, I think it's about 20 kg more, but it's not really significant. And when you think about how much more tech and the size of this car that's increased, that's actually really quite impressive. And it all falls to the wayside when you actually see how this drives, thanks to all of the changes they made in terms of rigidity. I can't wait to show you that later on. But there are ways to reduce weight. For example, if you don't get the sunroof and you get the carbon roof, the car's weight is reduced by 23 kg. The coolest thing they added is if you get rid of the normal seats, which are actually quite nice, they are very nice looking seats, and you put in the M carbon seats, that reduces the weight of the car by 10 kg. Again, go for the carbon ceramics, as I said, and it's 13. So you get the full M Sport track package, you're killing a lot of weight and you're making the car that much more agile. So lots of options there if you're serious about tracking this car. A look to the future, I got to see the new Touring when I was in the M-Town spot. Marcus Flash, the CEO, gave me a quick preview. I absolutely fell 
in love with the thing. I can't explain it. You can't really render it properly because you have to see it in, in person. It's Again, it's that look you get out of the RS6. It's a really wide rear wagon. The rear is completely unique. Like in this M3, it's not sharing the normal touring body. Um, it had a very unique roof spoiler that I begged Marcus to keep in. He said it wouldn't have been in the production version. Let's hope it is, fingers crossed. But that is a car that I would, I'd sell my left testicle for that car. It was stunning. I can't wait for the rest of the world to see it. Now, let's head inside and show you one of the coolest sports sedan interiors that you'll ever see. So is this, or is this not, the coolest sports sedan interior you've ever seen? All credit goes to the M bucket seats. They are incredible. These carbon bucket seats have just been designed to make you have an accident in your pants as soon as you open the doors. There's no other way to put it. I mean, they've even got a holder for your, Never mind. But my point is, they look incredible. And if you don't tick any other option on M3 or M4, please tick these. A, they're slimmer, so you get a bit more room, I feel, in the back. B, you can tickle the passenger and driver. Who doesn't want to do that? And of course, 10 kg weight reduction, the most awesome looking seats in the world. They have a party trick as well. You can remove this headrest here if you want to go on track and wear a helmet. So there's some screws behind here that allow you to do that. How cool is that? That's how seriously they're taking the whole track application of this. Apart from that, the actual electrical adjustability of this is very high for a full carbon track seat. Normally, they're all one piece like you'd find in AMG or in Porsche, whereas these two separate pieces, very movable as well. I do like the middle carbon bit to look at. When I actually have it, it feels like I'm holding my microphone or my phone in between my legs. It's a little bit weird and you do need to be a little bit athletic to be able to sit in it comfortably. Apart from that, what else makes it stand out? Well, the colour scheme, of course, when you've got the full merino leather in dual tone, brings out the best in any interior, but particularly for one in the M series. Then you've got carbon fibre everywhere. The drive unit is fantastic. The stick here, unique for M3 and M4. It looks really good. It feels great. It's all metal and leather with the typical M piping on top as well. I find the whole M mode and the setup thing really easy to use. And there's so many options now, which is great. That's annoying because I was just doing a hand gesture and it picked it up. That part of the BMW interior still gets on my nerves. I'll be honest with you. The gestures just need to be turned off. But this central unit is fantastic, easy to use. M mode switches us from road to sport to track. And then it gives us a different view in the front as well, which is great. Setup mode gives you so many options now. We've even got the option for braking. M Traction Control has got a 10 stage option here for you to choose from, just like we used to see in like the AMG GTR or the C63. What's kind of weird is the exhaust button is normally always on, so it's always on the loudest setting, which I love, but when you press it, it makes it quieter. So kind of logically, you're doing things the other way around now. You don't need to press the button unless you want the car to be quieter. The steering wheel, I've never been a fan of it. I've told you guys this a million times. Sorry for repeating myself. It, I feel it's too thick. I feel it's too unwieldy, but I do like the carbon accents on it. it looks great. I like the M1 and the M2 setup buttons. Again, very convenient. The carbon paddles, fantastic. I love the red texture on the back. I like the carbon. I like the plus and minus with the red detailing. It's just really nice. Really, it looks totally different to me to the 340i that we sat in. And you really want that in an M3, don't you? You don't want it to feel like a normal 3 Series. This does not, I'm sure you agree. It feels like its own animal, which is great. Similar story in the rear as well. Rear space, mega, especially with the carbon bucket seats. Look how much space I've got here, including the tickle holes. It's great, head space, loads of it for me. I'm 5'10", I've got a lot of head space here. The seats are nice and comfortable. They're not like sport bucket seats back here. It's just your typical bench, which have been trimmed in the same way. I really like it. It's nice and roomy, but it doesn't feel like a gigantic saloon either, because I don't think you want the 3 Series to feel that way. Maybe you do as a rear occupant, but I can imagine being quite comfortable in the rear of this car. Right, now, I need to show you how fast this car is. It is ridiculously fast. It is a capable, capable thing. And as I said, it's blown away my expectations. So as we start, a little tip for you guys, if you put the car into M2 and then do the startup, you get a really nice deep startup. Don't get any pops and bangs, but it sounds nice and deep, which is great. So we're gonna start off with a more comfortable drive. 
which I know sounds weird for an M3 review, and I say comfort and I start clawing it, but sometimes I like to get the feel of a performance car, particularly a daily one, by seeing what it's like just driving normally. And you will feel immediately when you drive the M3 that it's got a harsh ride. I don't mean harsh like it's, it's unbearable, I just mean you know that you are in something that has been attuned to be really good on the racetrack. And I think I mean that as a compliment. It feels nothing like the really, really comfortable M340i, which epic, epic daily that car, really, really comfortable for all passengers. This thing, it's a little bit more aggressive, but I like it. I like aggressive because I can feel that. I can feel that in my steering as well. I mean, it's another level compared to the 340i. This is some really nice steering feel. Sorry for this, I'm enjoying it. Um, I haven't felt this kind of nice steering from an M car, I think, since my M2 CS. And I did theorize, is it more the four-wheel drive, the all-wheel drive M cars that are letting me down? And I think it is. I think the M5s, the M8s, the X-Drive cars, etc., a bit too numb. And I worry about that for the all-wheel drive M3 and M4 that's coming up. Obviously, when you have the extra drive shafts in the front, then you're bound to lose some steering feel. And people are more experienced with it, like Mercedes AMG and Porsche, they've managed to negate it. So far, the only car that I've seen from BMW that's done a better job has been the M8 and maybe the facelift M5. I think they're getting the hang of it. But again, nowhere near to how nice the steering on this feels. I really like it. So that's the first good point. Yes, the suspension is a little bit harsh, Apart from that, if I turn the exhaust off by pressing the button, still haven't got my head around yet, it's fairly quiet. There is some tire and road noise, but again, I welcome that kind of thing in a performance car. I don't want it to be too cosseting because the way it looks and the way it performs, as you'll see in a minute, you want it to betray some of that in the way it feels normally as well. So I'm okay with that. Right, time to stop playing around. Let's put the car into M2 mode. The speed on this car, I was not expecting this. I've felt 510 brake horsepower many times. My daily car, the C63S, is at that level. This thing feels so, so fast. And I must say, it feels light. Look at the speed of this car. And then the steering, it doesn't fade. It's still alive and I know where the front wheels are, I know where I'm pointing, the car is going exactly on the line I need it to. It's incredible, it's the best BMW M car that I've driven in a long, long time, certainly since the introduction of the M2. Again, the speed of this thing, you just have to understand it. Let me, let me slow down for a second, right? It's vicious. This acceleration is vicious, it's very much like an all-wheel drive car. And the sound is nice as well. I think, just like we saw in that startup, quite a deep burble coming from this. So it's not loud, loud, but the sound that A is coming from the car and B being brought into the cabin. It's a typical six-cylinder sound, very BMW sound, but it's nice and deep. That's what I like about it. I think that is the significant difference here between A, the equal length pipes, and B, designing an exhaust system from the get-go with the different filters in mind. Just at any point you can plant power down, you've got the confidence, the traction control light isn't blinking like the old M3 would. This is a different car. And I said it felt agile. Let's talk about the handling. Steering, so good. Steering is very, very good. I really wanted to say that today and I am. This car being automatic, slightly heavier than the previous car, it feels way lighter. We talked about all the rigidity that they've added with the aluminum shear panel, the struts, the braces, etc. all of it helping. You can see all of it having an effect, making this car, for the driver at least, feel lighter than the previous generation. And I think more crucially, for me, feeling more agile, feeling more predictable, both on the front and on the rear. I must say, I've only heard negative things about the engine of this, car as well from the X3M, X4M, etc. This engine's brilliant. It's not even a twin scroll turbocharged setup. It's single scroll twin turbos. There's no lag at all, I promise you. There is no lag 
at all when I'm putting my foot down here. Right, let's have a look at the gearbox. They say they've changed the tune on it. See how aggressive it is. Shifting pretty instantly. Further down shift, instant. Wow, it does react a lot quicker than what I've seen in the M5 and the M8. So definitely whatever they've tweaked here, working really well. So looking at all of that, looking at how this thing performs when you put power down. I mean, it's really, it's got too much power for the road, I think. It's reached that territory now, the M3, where we found supercars reaching it not too long ago. That you will easily exceed legal speed limits in these cars without realizing it. But then, the thing about a sports car, particularly a daily one, is that you want to be able to take the opportunities that you normally can't in a normal car or in a less capable car. This car has got the power and the agility to give you confidence to do any maneuver in a short space of time. It is really, really capable. You look at it compared to the previous Gen M3, it's on another level. It's not skittish on roundabouts, even in the dry like that car was. It's not gonna catch you out. It's a lot more predictable in the way that it will behave. You wanna get the rear end out, you can do that if you want. But generally, particularly the excellent traction that you get on the Michelin Pilot 4S's that are on this car, it feels like an all-wheel drive car already, especially on a dry day like this, You've got all the confidence as well to put the power down earlier and earlier and the car will respond. I think the wagon is going to be a massive seller. Marcus Flash said it's not going to be a limited edition car, at least that's what he said back then. So it should be a series run car, which is great. Not everything super cool needs to be limited edition. I would really like one of those. I think because I saw it in the stealth, like a matte grey spec, I would probably prefer that look as well. I think with the added practicality, and the sheer ability that this car has displayed to us today, it's gotta to be one of the perfect dailies. And I'm so glad we've got one of those to come out of this, you know, OPF, EV, et cetera, generation where there's little hope for anything. I'm really happy with an aggressive looking M3 Touring that looks like it could swallow the car in front. How are the rivals gonna battle a car like this? The C63 undoubtedly is gonna have more power. It's gonna have its own type of aggressive styling, but it's not got a V8 anymore, it's lost its main selling point. The RS4, it's never been as dynamic as the BMWs or the AMGs. This car is sitting really pretty at the moment, prettier than it has in the last decade. So all in all, the highly capable performance sedan, I cannot think of anything beyond the sound really that I think, and maybe slightly stiff suspension that I would put against it. Of course, the looks are my mind. I personally like them. And I think it's very spec dependent as well. And undoubtedly, like I said in the facelift, they will attend to that. You know what these car manufacturers are like. But let me be clear, as the flagship of BMW M, which the M3 is, it's got the best steering I've seen from them, the most responsive engine, the most responsive gearbox, the most predictable chassis setup. It's really ticking all of the boxes. I think I can safely say now that the M3 is their best car as far as I'm concerned. So guys, I'm blown away by this car. I hope you've enjoyed this review. Please do like, subscribe and share. Can't wait to get this back on the channel. I'll see you guys next time.